majority of authorities on flying saucers or unidentified flying objects in America. Here is Major Donald Keogh, ladies and gentlemen. And over on this side, this is Colonel J. Bryan. Colonel Bryan. Uh, Major Keogh is a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, Annapolis. You're an aircraft and balloon pilot in the Marines. You were. Lecturer, author of four books about UFO. Is that right? That's correct. And you are currently the director of NICAP. <laughs> NICAP. <laughs> NICAP. <laughs> yes, National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena. The National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena. NICAP. Okay. Colonel Bryan is a graduate of Princeton, a former special assistant to the Secretary of the Air Force. Uh, Air Force. What did I say? Air Force? I was in it for four years. Can you imagine that? I'm mispronouncing it already. A distinguished magazine editor and writer, and... Uh, He's an, edit, uh, he's an editor for Town and & Country and Saturday Evening Post. So you know that these gentlemen are not just... I saw one over there, my God. Well, there goes another one. <coughs> no, it's not that time. These are distinguished gentlemen who really believe that there are such things as extraterrestrial explorations of our planet. That That's right? correct. You really believe that? We agree with the Air Force. They have a top-secret conclusion that these thousands of objects that have been seen by pilots and tracked by radar are real and they're superior to anything we have, so there's from somewhere that's just a little ahead of us. You, you agree with that statement? <clears throat> Thoroughly. Completely. You really do? Always. 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 <laughs> well, you charge that the Air Force has been suppressing information deliberately withholding back facts about... Uh, well, that's right. They have an order, Air Force Regulation 200, which orders anyone in the Air Force to withhold information unless they're okayed by headquarters. Well, information about... I was, about UFOs. Well, unidentified flying objects. Yeah, I was a pilot in the Air Force mm -hmm. for four years. Well, I was a pilot for three years. It took me a year to learn how. <laughs> that's all right. That's, that's the right time. <laughs> the right length of time. And uh, I never heard anything about... You know, I never heard anybody ever tell me that if I spotted something, I, didn't, I couldn't tell anybody about it. Well, what time was that? What year? I, my pilot training class was 57 which means I got my wings in uh, 1957, and I flew through 61, 60. Well, the order was in effect then, but it wasn't probably circulated widely. Oh. We it's have a copy of it, in case you care to see it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Crane, you know your producer has seen one. Did you know that? My producer has seen one? <laughs> First of all, it's not my, I think you're talking about Mr. Norman Clenman of, of our staff. Yes? Who, A, is not my producer. Forgive me, I didn't know. And B, is a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> he is just a little bit funny. <laughs> you know what I mean, so I know. But we humor him. I mean, we don't. As a matter of fact, if he's around, <laughs> he may be coming out to get me, or they may be coming to get him. Okay, we have, do we do the do we show the slides first, or do we have the commercial first? What's the plan? We have got pictures. <laughs> what do you have? We have the commercial first. That's what you let <clears throat> We have some pictures of uh, some. You know, you figure it out. We've got some pretty strange pictures to show you in about a minute from right now. Okay, we're going to uh, show you some slides, photos of the kind of aerial phenomena we're talking about. It's up to you. Make up your own mind. Are the UFOs? Uh, Kneecap supplied us with them. NICAP. <laughs> I like kneecap better, you know that? That's a much, much catchier way of, you know. However, and uh, I think they'll show up pretty well on your TV set. First, this is a picture taken May 11, 1950, by Paul Trent in McKinville, Oregon. It was examined and published by Life magazine, and Life described him as an honest individual and said the negative appeared to be untampered with. Here's another picture taken by, here's another picture. Here's another picture taken by Paul Trent, the famous Paul Trent in Oregon. Okay, August 1951, the next picture. I can even hear those clickers, you know that? Like a slide shows, change the slide. Okay, August 1951, one of the most famous American UFO sightings in Lubbock, Texas. The photo was taken by Carl Hart Jr. of a V-shaped light formation known as the Lubbock Lights. The Air Force said it was light reflected from a high-flying bird. That's pretty weird. <laughs> okay. 
Here's an official U.S. Coast Guard photo taken by Shell Alpert in the Salem, Massachusetts Coast Guard Station in 1952. He watched bright lights in the sky, watched them for a few seconds more, called in another Coast Guardsman, and then took this picture. In 1964, the Coast Guard added this note to their caption on the picture, saying they have no further information or explanation to add concerning this photograph and no official opinion as to the identity or origin of the lights. Now, here's a surprise. Take a look at this. This photograph was published in the official organ of the Royal Air Force, the RAF Flying Review, which the magazine said seemed one of the few photographs of UFOs that does appear to be authentic. The photograph was taken in Rouen, France in 1954, and it looks identical with a Paul Trent photo we already showed you taken thousands of miles away four years earlier. Let's go back and show you the Paul Trent picture. The one before that. The one before. We can't do it. Well, all right. <laughs> Good. Now, here are a couple of pictures that were taken in 1957 over Fujisawa in Japan. Uh, NICAP isn't very strong on these, right, Major? You don't That's right. You feel they're the most dubious of the samples that you brought. But we thought we'd include them anyway to spell out the time. Here's a long way shot of a Japanese capsule, si caps capsule sighting, and here's a close-up of it. That could be anything, you know that? Certainly could. That could really be anything. Okay, back to our country. Here's a photograph taken on the Pacific Coast near San Pedro, California on December 1957 by radio officer T. Fogel aboard the British ship S.S. Ramsey. And a series of pictures taken off Brazil, the Trinidadis Islands. As the unidentified flying object was in motion, these pictures were taken by a marine photographer on a Brazilian ship participating in the International Geophysical Year. I can hardly see anything there. Oh, I see, up in the corner. Okay. I see. Oh, look at those. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, there's only one. Oh, I'm looking at the clouds. I just thought I spotted four of them. It's contagious. I think that's enough, right? Oh, wait a minute. There's one I do want to show you. Can you skip down to slide number 16? Can you cut through the chain to slide number 16? That's not it. Okay, now, this is interesting. An aircraft company that we cannot name took this picture as a promotion picture for this airplane, the B-57, but they never published it. And the reason why they never published it is because in the upper right-hand corner, there is something that showed up on the print of the picture, which you can't see in this picture, but which we'll show you right now. This is a blow-up of the upper right-hand corner of that picture of the B-57 airplane. And this picture was only recently submitted to NICAP, which estimates that it was taken between 1958 and 1960. Okay? That's enough. I think this has more weight to it than all the photographs that you might show. This is official Air Force intelligence sketch based on 3,000 reports which describe UFOs as disc-shaped objects, apparently metallic, which can maneuver at speeds up to thousands of miles an hour. Now, that was circulated secretly to all Air Force intelligence officers at the very same time the Air Force data, they had no idea what these things looked like. Okay. Now that okay. not only proves the secrecy, but also that they have a very good idea what these things are. Well, well, you know, all I can tell you, all I can reiterate again is that for the four years that I was in the Air Force and a pilot, and I had a secret clearance and all the rest of it, we, I never Well, now, Mr. Green, the one thing you don't realize, probably, this, uh, this document here, the UFO evidence, is based on an eight-year investigation. The Board of Governors in NICAP include admirals, generals, colonels, scientists, technicians, pilots, over 200 experts in this field. Many of them have had sightings. We've investigated over 5,000. At least 1,000 of these represent airline pilots on every major airline, all the services in the United States, tower operators, missile trackers. All of these people saw something, and sometimes the radar trackings confirmed the visual. Professional astronomers, too, Major. That's right. Professional astronomers? Yes, professional astronomers. That's very interesting, and I'll tell you why that's interesting in a minute from right now. Okay, we've heard about UFOs or whatever they are, and I'm going to be neutral for a minute or two more. However, you mentioned astronomers, reputable astronomers have, you know, corroborated your sightings and your documented evidences. 
I'd like to introduce to you now and to my audience, Dr. I. M. Levitt. Dr. Levitt, would you come out here, please? Have you met these gentlemen before? Maybe you can. Yeah. All right, Dr. Levitt is the director, gentlemen, the director of the Fells Planetarium in Philadelphia, probably one of the most famous planetaria in planetaria. Planetarium, but the people of New York will hate you for this. You know that. <laughs> well, the Hayden Planetarium is a nice planetarium, too. I'm glad you brought that. I'm just accrediting you, Doctor. And Dr. Levitt is the director of the Fells down in Philadelphia, which is a, a most distinguished planetarium. And what do you think about all the pictures you just saw and all the evidence in Major Kehoe's book, UFO? Uh, well, I haven't had very much chance to uh, go through this book, but what, from what I have... There are some very striking examples of taking too much for granted. Astronomers have seen them. In the book, we list two. Clyde Tombaugh, Seymour Hess. Clyde Tombaugh did not say he saw a flying saucer. He said he saw something. Seymour Hess also said, I saw something. Now, no one is going to say to you that you do not see anything, because to do that is to say, the 5,000 people or so who have contributed to this book, except for those who plant deliberate hoaxes, and there are those, those people are suffering from hallucinations. We will not say that. They are seeing something, but what we are saying is, you describe precisely what you saw in great detail, and the chances are we can tell you what this was as the operation of a natural law. The Air Force has done this in Project Blue Book, and I think 97% of the sightings have been identified and have been explained as the operation of a natural law. And, of course, the first thing the people who foster flying saucers and who would like to believe this may be uh, uh, extraterrestrial uh, life will say, well, it is not the 97% I'm thinking about, it is a, it is a 3%. And my answer to that is if it was 99.99%. Uh, and 44 uh, Well, if it was 99.99, they would say it's that 101 percent. That's the bunch that we're talking about, not the others. Yeah. And so in, in a, an argument like this, you know, you cannot lose. You must say these people are seeing something, and the scientists will say, tell us what you are seeing precisely. Well, let, me, and, let me cut through because we do have a time problem, Doctor. In all your years of looking at pictures, and most of astronomy today is studying of photographs, is it not? Well, in my case, studying the sky. Okay, and looking at the sky, looking Precisely. at photographs, and discussing astronomy and phenomenon with all of your colleagues. Have you ever, in your entire career, ever come across an instance that would lead you to believe that there was an object manufactured on some other planet, and now in our... Well, it is not only that I do, and I have never seen it, but I don't know of a single astronomer, other than those two, and there must be several thousand of them in the, in the country, who have seen one. And you must recall that these people look in the sky every night. I do. I run an observatory. And I take several hundred people up occasionally, and I will point out constellations. And if there should be a star that doesn't belong there, I can tell you. And if there should be a star I'm missing, I can also tell you if it's a prominent one. A star I have never seen. Kind of scary, wouldn't it? Anyway, this has never happened, but, the, but should there be a, a gap where there should be a star, the chances are I would know it, for I know the constellation very well. What's we your reaction? I'd like to say there are far more than two, Doctor. You're simply not acquainted with Well, I am only taking what is in this Just point. please. You said that uh, Dr. Hess did not say he saw a UFO. He, we have a report from him in which he says he saw a powered disk. If you want to see that, we'd glad to show it to you. Uh, it was another planetarium up in Boston, the Hayden Planetarium. One of their staff, Mr. Walter Webb, has a sighting up there, which is reported to us. Dr. James Bartlett. But what did he report? Did he report he, reported, he saw a sighting he or, a, or a thing? He reported an object moving at tremendous speed under intelligent control, making maneuvers faster and tighter than anything well, this that is, we have. <laughs> and I would like to continue a minute, Doctor. Well, you are going to build up such a case by the time you are finished. I'll never know where I wanted to go. <laughs> Get to it at the very beginning. Well, I, I listen patiently. In, in any case, in any case. Well, as many, as much as I'm not going to get in here either, right? <laughs> Come on, I'm the leader out here. 
Call the leader, gang. Right, uh, Simon <laughs> says that we only have a minute left. I know. I was trying to get half of it. So I'll know what I'm going to ask. But I just want to ask a couple of questions. Number one, is your well, you have a, this is a non-profit organization, is that right? Right. Washington, D.C., and we have thousands of reports from people who had to go as much as to join the organization. No, no. Uh, uh, five dollars. Nothing now? Five dollars. Well, we run in the red constantly. <laughs> and, and also, Major Kehoe, you earn a good part of your living by writing books and talking about no. flying saucers. I lost money on this. You know that I have written on many oh, I, I, I wish I got your fee for this true story magazine. I'm going to plug it, but I sure wish I got your fee for that. <laughs> I wrote a story to them 15 years ago, and here's another one. Now, I made a lot of money on two articles in 15 years for that. What did you say, Colonel? I said, I think the doctor's getting a little off the subject. Now, time's running out. Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't you get paid for working, too? Oh, yes, but, I, I, but I'm trying to, trying to point out... If you get paid to this, can you view it as objectively as someone who is uh, completely divorced from this? This is a question which I have. Doctor, I, uh, of course, it's only a minor thing. I have a bachelor of science degree, which doesn't match yours, of course. But I regard myself as a very careful reporter. I have examined and interrogated over 400 pilots, foreign pilots and American pilots. We have signed reports, almost 1,000 of them, and they include reports by astronomers, and I would challenge you to come down to our organization sometime. We will show you these records, and if you can explain them satisfactorily, and the Air Force can, well, we, we will disband our organization. Do we have one more minute for a comment on this? A, a, a few seconds? Okay. Uh, you know, for, for, for someone to sit here and say, we can prove everything, is to say that there's no more necessity for research. Now, there are aerial phenomena taking place of which we have no knowledge simply because we have not yet discovered what the basic uh, laws, the natural laws under which these operate. And so there could be many of these things which have been cited by intelligent people, by people of integrity, and this is right, except for one thing, and that is that it is still the operation of a natural law, perhaps a natural law which we do not understand at the moment. Doctor, did you ever hear of Admiral Harry Chilton Carter, former head of the CIA? He was the chairman of our board. He was on our board for five years. He issued the statement that these things were real, they were under intelligent control. It was a dangerous situation because several times there have been scrambles of the Strategic Air Command when these things were mistaken for Soviet attack. And well, that could be a danger. Issue. You know, scrambling our air forces to run after something uh, could be a danger, That's especially right. if uh, there's nothing things, there. These things have been picked up on radar repeatedly. Well, they, well let me have just shaped objects seen at the same time. Well, before we attribute all sorts of things to the air force, let me conclude. Our, we're out of time. Really, I want to thank you, gentlemen, all. But I want to conclude by just we contacted the air force, mm -hmm. and this is the from uh, Major Maston Jacks, who is the Pentagon UFO project officer. The Air Force has responsibility for the air defense of the United States and is also interested in aerial phenomena. In 16 years of tracking down reports, 9,000 of them, not one, repeat, not one, has ever turned out to be a threat to American security nor an example of advanced technology nor of interplanetary or extraterrestrial origin. I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> Not for any, but that's a load in any way. That's you understand. official policy which has been carried out. And we have on our board the mo former monitor of the entire project. And he says that for years the Air Force has been hiding the facts from the well, public. In any case, it was interesting, right? Right? <laughs>